I'm Commander Cory, and this is my favorite playthrough on YouTube. Last time on Mass Effect Legendary Edition, Commander Cory Shepard arrived at the Citadel and completed all of the possible side quests that were available to her, righting all of the wrongs and sticking her Paragon nose in places maybe it didn't belong. Hello, my beautiful nerds, and welcome back to another episode of Mass Effect Legendary Edition on Insanity Difficulty right here on Missile Dine Online. What's up? That's me. That's my channel. In today's episode, we are going to head and do a very important side quest that actually unlocks a specialization. Trust me, it's going to be awesome. It's important. That is the Rogue VI mission. That is the goal for today's episode. Uh, and don't forget that you can hit that subscribe button and that bell notification so that you know when we're premiering new episodes of Mass Effect, which, by the way, is about every single day around 2 p.m. Eastern uh, as soon as I figure out the swing of that because stream days, it's really hard to do that. Which, by the way, you can check me out on streams as well. Twitch.tv slash online. Anyways, let's jump into it. Let's get this cool specialization and head to the local cluster, the moon. So we're leaving the Citadel. We're going to keep our team of Liara and Garrus as long as we can, because they are just, they are just so cool. They're the coolest. I love, I, I'm, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of this, this squad actually. So the only thing that we can really do, you can't talk to, I mean, you can talk to whoever you want, but they're not going to have anything new to add. We're actually going to head to the galaxy map and kind of start on this side quest right away to unlock a new specialization and complete what we can on Luna, the Rogue VI mission. So, let's go ahead and use the galaxy map. Message coming in. Patching it through. Wait, this isn't the message I want. Ms. Algelani's story on you just aired. She shouldn't have ambushed you like that. But you handled it pretty well. Thank you. I did the best I could. We had differences of opinion, sir. I hope she at least believed my sincerity. You handled yourself pretty well, Commander. She came across like a raving idiot. Nice. There is one other matter, however. The Citadel has been trying to play down Saren going rogue. It makes the Spectres look bad. Your mention of him was politically inconvenient. What happened? How angry was the Council? About what you'd expect. Don't worry too much about it, Commander. They're always angry with us. There you I go. I any longer Fifth Fleet out. See, so we handled that interview just fine, but we also get another message from Admiral Hackett. Commander, urgent message from Alliance Command coming in. I'll patch it through. Shepard, this is Admiral Hackett from Alliance Command. We've got a situation here, and you're the only one that can handle it. What do you need, Admiral? There's an Alliance training ground where we test weapons and technology and live fire simulations. One of the VIs we use to simulate enemy tactics in the drills is no longer responding to our override commands. It's gone rogue. Are you telling me this computer is thinking on its own? We're not stupid, Shepard. This is a virtual intelligence, not a true AI. It's not self-aware, and it can't access any external systems. We didn't do anything illegal here. Virtual intelligence support is critical to our military success. VIs process thousands of status reports and react in nanoseconds. No human can do that. We need you to fight your way through the training ground of the VI core and manually disable it. Can't you disable it remotely? Our fail-safes aren't responding. The VI operates on a closed network. It can affect any external systems, but we don't have any direct access to its processes. We could bomb it from orbit, but the damage to the facility would be catastrophic. We'd prefer to have someone shut down the core. Someone like you. I know Spectre's answered the Council, but you're still human. You're still part of the Alliance military, and right now we need you. The VI controls all the facilities, weapons, drones, and automated defenses. You're the only one that can pull this off, Shepard. Good luck. Which means that we have to leave Citadel space, and we are going to head to the local cluster. That, my friends, is our soul system. Our very own system. And we arrive. Hey, we know this place. This is this is us, man. Anyways, we can go ahead and uh, and check out Uranus. And see that, uh, don't laugh, chat. Ur Uranus is the largest producer of helium-3 in Alliance space with a population of over 300,000 folks, which is pretty cool. We can also see Pluto over here, which I believe they've actually updated the texture for Pluto now, uh, which is very cool that they would do that. It's mainly of note for being the gravitational anchor for the Prothean mass relay to Arcturus. Pluto and the Charon relay, formerly encased in ice and considered a moon, orbit each other. 
that's pretty neat. So there was a, another relay that, for all intents and purposes, we thought was a moon. That's pretty cool. And we also have all the other planets that you can check out, like Saturn, which we all know. The moon of Titan is mined for hydrocarbons, and they have a hostile environmental training facility for Marines. We have uh, Jupiter, of course, which apparently there are 91,000 people, or 9,100 people spread there. We have Neptune, that also has a research facility, a small research facility on Triton, only 70 folks there. We can check out Mars, which is probably the coolest one, considering that's where the Protheans were once considered a prospect for terraforming and colonization. The discovery of faster-than-light travel turned Mars into a quiet backwater. Its southern pool is a historical preserve centered on the Prothean ruins found there. Immigration and development are restricted as the search for Prothean artifacts continues with a population of 3.4 million people. That's pretty cool. Of course, we have Venus, which is just very, very hot. Who would have thought? <laughs> And Mercury, which is also very, very hot, with a population of 340. And finally, we have Earth. Look at Earth. Look at how advanced it is now, friends. For detailed information, please refer to the standard issue, Alliance Galactic Codex. Earth orbit is riddled with debris generated by bootstrap space development. That meaning they, they did it really quickly. Use of kinetic barriers is recommended at altitudes over 85 kilometers. So we have a ton of debris in our in our atmosphere now. And finally, we have the last place that we can go to, Luna, the moon. An early source of helium, Luna is now mined for materials used in space habitat construction. Two dozen major two dozen major stations have been constructed at Earth's L4 and L5 Lagrange points, all from lunar resources. With a population of 4.1 million people. That's more than they have on Mars. Let's go ahead and let's head to the moon. To the moon! I wonder if we'll find any doge up here. Now, I highly recommend for this mission. I know that I said I love Liara and Garrus as a squad. And I really, really, I mean it. I do. Uh, we are actually going to take Garrus and Tali, Zora, and Araya with us here. Because they have a bunch of tech strength. And we're only going to be fighting drones here on the moon. So these these two are going to be incredibly useful for us. So let's go ahead and let's take those guys with us. Trust me, you're gonna you're gonna want to make use of Tally Tally Zora Naraya's AI hacking. It's incredibly good in this mission. <laughs> this place can be really rough. So to recap, a rogue VI has taken over. Look at how beautiful that is. Seeing Earth. Wow, incredible. I also love that the capital of Luna is Armstrong. Kind of neat. So we're going to continue down here on the moon. And one of the cool things that you're going to find is a bunch of turrets that is basically just free XP. But you'll see a few of them. Now that the VI has kind of taken over this entire Alliance military base, it's going to be kind of interesting to see that we're going to be getting shot at by <laughs> Alliance military turrets. Of course, we're going to be in the Mako, which means that we can easily just destroy these things. See them in the distance there. We don't have to worry about it at all. This is just free XP. You know what I mean? Easy peasy, live and squeezy. Absolutely destroyed that one. An easy 530 experience. And then we can move on and destroy these ones. We can take these rockets to the face because they don't do anything to us. I don't, I don't know, man. They made this part so easy. There we go. Easy, what, 2,000 experience just for shooting these a couple times? Look at us. Anyways, we have a few more points of interest that we're going to head to, including one right down here, which is down here. If we follow along here, we can actually get even more turrets that we can destroy. You'll see them actually in the distance there. I wonder if we can actually... No, that's too far. All right, <laughs> you know, it was worth a shot. There they are. Let's get that another easy... 2k XP. Hey, maybe we'll even get lucky and level up a little bit here. Look at these. Look at these. What are you doing, Rocket? One of these days, I want to shoot one of those out of the air. Just just to be a vamp. That'd be pretty cool. Destroy that. Look at that. Easy XP. This is... I highly recommend doing this mission, by the way, as soon as you possibly can. As soon as you're about... It used to be you got this mission at level 20. You had to be level 20. As soon as you hit level 20 and you use the galaxy map, you would receive this mission. Uh, but because of the changes in this version of the game, they've 
well, they've, they've changed that. So now you no longer need to get... Um, I'm actually going to go over here first and grab this debris, and then we'll come back. Um, now, it needs to be about level 10 or so, I believe, is when we got this mission in the Legendary Edition, if you're using the Legendary Scaling. So we're going to skip this area, and we're going to go up and grab this debris. And there we go. Easy peasy. We get the CCP Luna 23 probe. Which has a specific name. It's the first destroyed probe that actually had a name. And we get two incendiary, an incendiary explosive for a grenade and a incendiary, incendiary rounds for ammo. And there's one more little, little, little point of interest that we can go show you, which is right over here. Now, if you're very quiet, you can actually hear the song that's playing in the background. Now, throughout a bunch of these planets in the galaxy, there's certain spots where you can actually find a song that's supposed to be associated with the now extinct Rachni from the Rachni Wars, the ones that were obliterated by the Krogan. Interestingly enough, you can hear that right here on the moon. Anyways, let's go destroy this rogue VI. We only have one base left. This is actually constantly shooting at us from all the way over here. You see the rocket's red glare <laughs> as they shoot at us. But we can go over here and destroy these. Like I said, I do recommend a party of Garrus and Tally, and you will see why. This can be an incredibly hard mission, especially if you do it as soon as you are able. But if you have a tech-heavy squad, I think you might be okay. Biotics are kind of useless here, to be honest with you, so we're at a disadvantage. Right there, we got a fat level up because of so much free XP that we're getting from doing this. Now, you can actually get both of these turrets if you're lucky. Right there, we were actually able to do damage to both of them, which makes it just a little bit easier. But as you can tell, we are totally fine. Mako taking basically no damage from the six turrets that are sitting here. Anytime that you can do a Mako mission and get free XP, I highly recommend it. The nerfs that they made in this version of the game is just unbelievable. So we have three different bunkers that we need to go into, each going to be doing different things. So we're going to head into, uh, let's start with this one over here, actually. But first, I want to make sure that our team is as ready as they can be. Now, I also want to point out my poor little Corey Shepard here has a little bit of a problem. And that is that we have points in electronics, we have overload. However, I neglected to, at the beginning, uh, to use to quick map overload. Uh, it used to just be on my power wheel. It is now gone. That is a bug that existed in the original version of the game as well. And I kind of didn't even think about it because I kind of figured it would be fixed. Uh, which means that we no longer have access to our own overload. It's gone. Completely gone. There's no way of getting it back. It's a bug. You, I just can never use overload now. Uh, which really sucks, but it is what it is. So overload for me is is gone. But it's still working to make my shields a little bit stronger. Uh, just that little bit. And of course the whole of the of the Mako is a little bit stronger too because of electronics. But it definitely stinks to not have access to, to overload as an adept after choosing that as my my talent. Now the way that you can fix that if you're me and you just you just started maybe, uh, you just quick map it so that it's um so you see how you have square and you can map the button. If you, if you, when you, before you unlock all of these abilities and it, and it gets rid of your overload, if you just map it, then you have it as long as you don't change the mapping for it. Um, so just keep that in mind. So we're going to put these four points into adept here and you'll see why at the end of this, at the end of this mission. And we're going to make sure that Garrus will just finish his, uh, decryption off and make sure his electronics is a little bit stronger there. And our dear Tally is going to make sure... We're going to make sure that she's got points into her pistols. We're also going to go ahead and change the rounds that are in our pistols so that we can deal with synthetics a little bit easier because we are going to be dealing with a bunch of drones. And that counts. For Garrus, we're going to give him the Reaper 5 sniper rifle with cryo rounds so that he can shred through their shields. And we're going to keep... Tally with the phasic rounds, which will do 30% shield bypass, but at the cost of 30% damage. Uh, and we'll just... You know what? No, we're going to give her the tungsten rounds. There we go. She's just going to be doing more damage to them. Perfect. All right. Now that we're ready, I recommend saving. 
and using the first building. Now, the way that these bunkers work is going to be pretty much the same thing every time you come in. You'll come into an initial room, and there's going to be two lockers that you can use and a bunch of power junctions that you'll see. These power junctions, you don't have to worry about them, actually. Uh, we'll go ahead and override all of the things that we can get in here for that free XP and some items. Not bad, not bad. And another one over here. Perfect. And you'll notice that right away, you'll see that there's an enemy on the other side of this. Now, what I like to do is I like to position my allies so that they are on each side of this little hallway here. Fortunately, Garrus says, I don't really want to go. Thank you, Garrus. Now, something really cool about this mission in particular is that it does have consequences in Mass Effect 2 and 3. And trust me, I think you're going to think it's... Uh, it's going to be pretty cool when we do get to that in the series. So let's go ahead and let's start clearing out these drones. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pop in here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to destroy this power junction. Get their attention. And then we're going to come over here and hope that these assault drones don't absolutely shred us. But you'll see that they're already doing a ton of damage to our shields there. We'll wait over here. We'll go ahead and start hitting them as they come in. Already shredding our shield. So we're going to use shield boost there. We're going to make Tally move in a little bit closer. She's going to go ahead and she's actually going to hack this one immediately. This is what I mean. This is the power of AI hacking. So that one's going to turn around. We're going to pop barrier here too because I don't want to lose. And we'll start attacking these. Now there are some, going to be some rocket drones as well. Unfortunately, the one that we hacked was the one that they decided to destroy, but that's okay. We can finish this one off. And we'll go ahead and sabotage these as well. Hopefully be able to cast two of them. Perfect. Another one down. Oh, Garrus, unfortunately, losing there because of the drone, the power of the drone, too much. And now we have to be careful because we do have a rocket drone right in front of us. We're going to make sure that we always have a solid object in front of us when we're dealing with these rocket drones. See? At, like that, because this would be enough to rip through your shields and murder you. We don't really want that to happen. So, let's have our team come. Looks like we cleared out all of the drones that we could in the first bunker. Easy for us. And there's no items, typically, that we can grab in these. So we're just going to run all the way to the side. And you'll see that we have these question marks already showing up for us. Those, my friends, are things that we're going to have to destroy. And it gets harder to destroy them as you proceed through these bunkers. Make sure our team's following. I'm going to pop a medi for them just because they were looking a little bit low. And we get in here, and you'll see on the sides here, we have these VI conduits. These need to be destroyed. Toxic gas is now being vented into the bunkers. All this does is it kind of reduces the healing of your... of your, uh, medigels. That's all. It's not... It's really not that big of a deal. And we have four on the other side. So, we're going to go run across and just grab those. We don't have any enemies left in bunker number one. So, we were able to do that pretty easily. Trust me, it can get hairy and you will see your team die pretty often. Maybe maybe unless you have a team of Garrus and Rex. But you saw how quickly Garrus was just shredded in that by one drone. The lights on the optical mainframes main flicker and die. The first of the three computing clusters containing the VI is offline. Nice. Now, one of these later on will be able to scan for a codex entry, so keep your eyes peeled for one of those. But we're going to head out of here and head to our second bunker. You can head to whichever bunker that you like, but we're going to head to this one over here first. And unfortunately, our team didn't level up or anything while we were destroying those drones, so we don't get anything special. But we're going to head into this, this one here, so you'll see that there was that one there, and then that one is going to be the final one that we go to. So let's go ahead and here. Okay, Tally, there's there's nothing here. Relax. Relax, girl. And again, as soon as you enter, you're going to have two more things that you can decrypt here. We get a Banshee, a Ham... Ooh, look at this. See, we're getting some, uh, some, some good upgrades here. Level 6 stuff now. Wow. And another secure crate. All right. Now get ready for more fights. So we're going to put our team, like I said, in the spots that I need them in. Tally, that's over there. Thank you. Why do you have an assault rifle? Anyways, <laughs> we'll go ahead. We'll open this up. And we'll come in and we'll just... There's going to be a drone right here that we're just going to pop shot. And run back. We're going to have them filter in. Now, another thing that you can do is you can actually shut the doors as they come in if it's a little too much for you. 
which is not a bad idea, honestly. We're going to go ahead and overload this one just to get it out of the way. Unfortunately, Garrus is going to go down. I was trying to see if I could get him up, but... Go ahead and see if we can shield boost Tally here. And let's see if we can destroy this before it destroys our friends. Unfortunately, Tally went down, so we do end up losing access to our very, very important... Uh, very, very important. I'm going to sabotage these. AI hacking that was going to save the day for us. There we go. Hopefully destroy these. There we go. Only one left. Come on. Woo. Easy peasy. All of the drones are down. We'll go ahead and take our team. And I'm going to pop a medi here for our friends. And she's still... See, we can do that without... Who needs Who needs AI hacking for these missions? And we'll proceed to the back and destroy the next four VI... Or next eight, I should say, VI conduits. But these ones are going to do something kind of annoying, kind of interesting. We'll go ahead and as we destroy the first one, the VI says, no way. Kinetic barrier fields power up throughout the bunker complex. That means throughout all of them. Now, we're going to have these kinetic barriers that are going to protect the VI conduit and are actually going to be stopping us from leaving and all this other stuff, which is actually going to help us later. So you can actually just avoid hitting these barriers by just kind of positioning yourself so you can attack around them and you don't even they're kind of irrelevant on the actual conduits themselves and we have a data port access where you can get a codex entry and 75 experience then we got to go across and do the exact same thing but on the way we'll go ahead and destroy this that is blocking tally from joining us and as soon as we open this door you'll see that there's yet another kinetic barrier and rinse and repeat and with that the second of three computing clusters containing the vi is offline we nailed it. All right, only one bunker remains. The hardest bunker yet. Ton of rocket drones await us in this one, so let's get to it. And the final bunker is before us. Want to keep this in mind that we're doing this at about level 16, uh, which feels like a pretty good level to do it, but I do recommend as soon as it's available doing it. For us, we didn't just because we, we were heading to the Citadel to do side quests, and I know that there's not, you know, a lot of fighting there or anything, so it didn't really matter, but I definitely recommend doing this before you get into some serious story quests. And, of course, we're opening the initial stuff that we can. And because we the kinetic barriers are up, we have to shoot them to go down, and you'll notice that all of the drones now are waiting for us. They know that we're here, so as soon as we shoot that, uh, that because they won't actually pass through that kinetic barrier at all, like they won't start shooting it or anything until we do. Uh, so once that does go down, we're going to have a big problem to deal with. Unfortunately, what kind of stinks is you can't actually do anything to them. Um, like you can't, it's not like you can AI hack them here. If I tried, it just doesn't do anything. So now that's on cooldown. I just wanted to point that out. So what I would recommend doing before we actually come back here and fight is we're going to back up a little bit and we're actually going to destroy this power junction because there's so many rocket rocket uh drones here that if they hit this and you're near it and it explodes you're dead it just kills you all right so we're gonna wait for her ai hacking to come back just a little bit and now that her ai hacking's back we're gonna destroy this kinetic barrier and immediately hack one of these and we're going to see if we can have our dear friend garris go ahead and throw out an overload there and a warp and we're gonna throw grenades And we'll go ahead, and unfortunately, this rocket drone is hacked, but it's shooting our friends. So that's a little bit of a problem. I'm going to pop barrier here. Go ahead and pop a medi on our friends. Make sure they're okay. And we're going to shield boost both of them so that they have that coming back. And then we're going to pop around here and hopefully destroy this before it becomes a problem. Good. Another one down. And we need to be careful here of another rocket drone. We want to make sure at all times there is something solid between us. Or else it's going to be bad news bears for us. So we're going to go ahead and do that. A sabotage on the rocket drone. And an overload on the assault drone. We need to destroy this before... Perfect. Only a couple more remain. The rocket drone being the one that we need to take out. 
and it did hit us so we're gonna go ahead we're gonna pop unity here and pop a medigel and just keep moving so that we don't end up getting hit by this unfortunately we did take a rocket to the face so we're gonna try to back up as much as we can here without getting shredded i'm gonna go ahead and shield boost myself i just cast some stasis i did not mean to do that <laughs> shield boost that's what i was looking for we need to be super super careful here another one down only one drone remains pop a medi keeping our friend tally alive there we go got a little hairy there i should have just ran around instead of trying to fight that rocket drone oh good job friends good job you did great who cares if we're low on medis i don't care i don't i don't care nothing all patched up and this is it this is going to be the final area that we need to come into now i recommend making sure that you do not ruin the kinetic barrier that is on this side here when you open this door you'll see that there's a kinetic barrier there don't take that down just yet we're gonna do this side first it doesn't really matter which side you do but just don't don't take down the kinetic barrier yet and we'll start destroying the last of the eight vi conduits additional security drones are now powering up so on the other side from us where that kinetic barrier is there's two drones just chilling <laughs> and they can't do anything actually i think there's three yeah there's three over there and they can't do anything because the kinetic barrier see what i mean only four more VI conduits remain. So we'll go ahead and destroy this kinetic barrier. And as always, AI hack the, the rocket drone. And they turned and they're fighting each other. So we're going to overload. I'm going to go ahead and shield boost on Garrus here so he can get back that back and marksman on ourselves so we can hopefully take down this last assault drone. Boom. That's it. Every enemy is now dealt with here on Luna. We just pretty much finished this up. So let's go ahead and destroy the last VI conduits. A burst of white noise over all frequencies nearly deafens you. Your hard suit's heads up display interprets it into a series of zeros and ones. By the way, if you were to translate that, it's actually help. They repeat again and again, blanketing all frequencies until the lights on the final VI cluster flicker and die specialization class achieved your specialization class will replace your base class in the talents on the squad screen talent ranks in your base class transfer over to your specialization class go to your squad screen to view the bonuses you gain with each rank in your specialization class and we get to choose as an adept between nemesis or bastion nemesis is a biotic specialist who uses mass effect fields to inflict heavy damage against opponents this increases duration and damage for all biotic abilities it improves warp it improves lift it's very very strong however bastion is the way we want to go this the bastions use biotics for defense or for opponent immobilization reduces recharge time on all biotics it improves your barrier and improves stasis and improves stasis to the point when you max out bastion you can do damage to enemies that are in stasis yes that's incredibly incredibly strong and something we will be utilizing as soon as we possibly can now, there are, of course, more specializations that you can unlock. If you're not playing an Adept, you get different ones. Like, for instance, the Bastion one here is actually shared by Adept and Sentinel. Nemesis is shared by Adept and Vanguard. Sentinels can also get the Medic specialization, which is shared with Engineers. Vanguards can get the... Shock Trooper specialization, which is shared by soldiers. Soldiers can get both the Commando and Shock Trooper specializations. Engineers get Medic and Operative. Infiltrator gets Commando and Operative. So these are all very, very good. If you are playing one of the other classes, a little bit about these specs. Commando is a specialist class for the Infiltrator and Soldier. They rely on lethal efficiency and precision strikes rather than brute force to eliminate their opponents. So your bonuses will include an increase of all weapon damage, improved immunity, marksman, and assassination talents. Medic is exactly what it sounds. It improves the first aid and medicine talents and dramatically increases the recharge rate of those associated abilities. They have two different specializations. They have Neural Shock Specialization, which improves Neural Shock Duration by 25% and Toxic Damage by 40, or First Aid Specialization, which First Aid does 80 extra healing and it ignores Toxic Damage and allows Medigel to revive fallen party members, which is incredibly strong. You don't have to rely on having uh, Unity on uh, up and able to use. 
Now, Nemesis is probably one of the best ones that you can get if you are playing a Vanguard. Nemesis is what you see here. However, they also will increase their pistol and shotgun damage increases one percentage point higher for each rank after the first, which means that they're going to be 15% better. Uh, and that's not true for Shock Trooper, which makes Nemesis the way to go if you're playing a Vanguard. Shock Trooper is one that you can get for Vanguards and Soldiers. That increases their health and damage protection, as well as specializing immunity, barrier, and adrenaline burst abilities, uh, making you pretty, pretty darn tanky. An adrenaline burst being incredibly strong. And then finally, we have the Operative Specialization. It is a specialist class for engineers and infiltrators. Operatives are masters at manipulating their environment to maximum advantage. Bonuses include reduced recharge on all tech attacks and improvements to overload and sabotage, making you able to use those all the time. Sure would be great if we had overload, by the way. And that's all the specializations. We, of course, as an adept, are going to choose Bastion because it's so, so good. Uh, and like I said, we will be hearing more about this, this rogue VI that's taken over the Luna base. We will be hearing stuff about this later on. In fact, if you go to your journal, uh, the rogue VI and all of its agents have been destroyed. It's unclear exactly how the VI became sentient, though Alliance Command will no doubt conduct a thorough investigation of the matter. So it sounds like something happened, and the VI was made sentient. It didn't just become it. Something, somebody must have done something to it. Very interesting. So we're going to head out of the bunkers, because that, my friends, is all you can do on Luna. Oh! But of course, I haven't even showed you. Bastion. So if whatever your talent is, ours was adept, whatever your class is, I should say, whatever points you put into that will become the next whatever you put, right? So for us, we already now, uh, the recharge time on all biotic talents is reduced by 10%, and our biotic protection is increased by 15%. And you can see that you pretty much have to go all the way, you have to max out this thing to get this stasis specialization. Enemies affected by stasis can still be damaged. That is so incredibly strong. And of course, we have the barrier specialization, which is also very, very good. And we'll jump in the Mako and head all the way back to the Normandy. And there's one more thing that I think we definitely will have time for in this episode that I really want to show you guys. And that is from doing a little side quest with Shaira, the consort on the Citadel. We received a trinket if we talked to Zelton first, fixed his issue, and then talked to Shaira. So we're going to, there's actually a, it's super hidden, I guess. If you didn't know that this existed, you wouldn't find out without thorough exploration. But I'm going to show you a really, really interesting scene. So we're going to leave the local cluster and we're going to head to uh, the Pharos Attican Beta cluster and the Hercules system, not the Pharos, although we will be heading there in the next episode. Uh, we're going to go to the Hercules system. And we're going all the way back to Elatania. This is the monkey area that we were able to uh, max out our Paragon with an exploit. So let's go ahead and land here. And it doesn't really matter who you bring, but we're going to bring Liara and Garrus. Uh, Liara especially, because I think she's going to think this is pretty cool. So if we check our map, we'll see that there's an anomaly over here. Now, we've already been here. We've already fully explored this planet. But over here, we haven't been there. There's something very, very cool over here. Life-changing, if you will. Okay, after mountaineering for what feels like a decade, we finally get over and find another Prothean ruin sitting here. This time, though, it seems like it might be active. Very interesting. Let's go ahead and head out of here. We approach this sphere. Let's go ahead and recover this Prothean artifact. Upon doing so, the sphere raises. Let's go ahead and examine it here. Examining the strange Prothean artifact reveals a small, irregular slot on the underside. Remembering that strange trinket you received from the Asari consort in the Citadel, you pull it out and place it into the slot. The ball explodes in a brilliant flash of white light, momentarily blinding and disorienting you. Slowly, your senses return as you wake from a deep sleep. You are alone in the forest, though you are not far from the caves you share with the others of your tribe. There is a pain in a small lump in the back of your skull as if a chip of flint has been forced under the surface of the skin. Leaning on your bone-tipped spear for support, you rise to your feet. A sound draws your attention upwards, where a strange creature hovers high above you. It is unlike the birds you hunt by the lake's edge. It has no head and no wings, yet somehow it flies. It is a beast of shining silver 
hanging motionless in the sky like a cloud. You sense it is watching you, studying you. Raising a hairy fist, you shake your spear at it in anger, and the creature rises up quickly until it disappears from view. With a satisfied grunt, you make your way back to the caves and the rest of the tribe. You fall into the familiar patterns of life. The hunt for food, the struggle to claim and keep a mate, the battles against other tribes that would claim your territory. Days roll into nights and back into days. Each time you rise from sleep, there is the sensation that you are not alone, that some other is with you, sharing all you see, hear, and feel. At these times, your hand goes to that strange lump at the back of your skull, and you remember that silver creature in the sky. The air grows colder. Winter falls. You must range farther for food, clutching the furs tight against you to ward off the chill. It is on one of these long hunts that the strange bird returns. You hear it before you see it, its call a deafening roar as it descends from above, swooping down on you. A single great eye opens on the underbelly, a glowing red orb. You try to run, but a finger of red light extends from the eye and engulfs you and all goes black again. You wake an instant later to find yourself on Elatania, lying on your back, the Prothean artifact looming above you, undamaged, and your companions standing over you. They help you to your feet, puzzled. There was a flash of light and you just sort of toppled over, Liara explains. Are you okay, Shepard? Garrus asks. You don't answer right away, wondering at the impl implications of what you have seen. The memories of a Cro-Magnon hunter, captured by an implanted Prothean data recorder. How long did they study the primitive humans, observing them and analyzing the results at their base on Mars? And what, if anything, did they learn from us? I'm fine, you finally reply. Realizing this is a mystery you will probably never solve. Forget about it. Very interesting. So it appears that the Protheans on Mars were actually studying very, very early human ancestors. Very interesting. In fact, implanting them with technology that allowed them to see through their eyes, see what they're seeing, feel what they're feeling, hear what they're hearing. Absolutely wild. And that is one of those things that you just don't know that you have that until, of course, it, you you find it. You, like, have to stumble upon this place. Now, interestingly enough, finding and unlocking the Prothean Sphere in this game is flagged as an event when you're importing a save file in Mass Effect 2, but that event has no effect in the actual game. So, kind of interesting there. Anyways... That, my friends, is going to do it for today's episode of Mass Effect Legendary Edition right here on Missile Dine Online. I hope that you guys you guys, are, you guys enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Huge shout out to those of you watching the premieres almost every single day around 2 p.m. Eastern. I sincerely appreciate you guys, uh, and hopefully I can get caught up and get these ready to go and uh, covered for the days where I'm streaming. So, real quick, I do want to look at where we're at here. We are now level 17. Uh, so we're going to put more points into our Bastion there because, again, that is super, super important. We want to level that up as soon as we possibly can and get that Stasis. one Basically, one more level and we'll be able to get that Stasis Specialization, which is going to be incredibly helpful, trust me. Being able to take out an enemy, a super dangerous enemy, out of the fight, focus on everything else, uh, and then also be doing damage to that enemy is going to be <laughs> oh, just so good. I'd like to know your opinion. In the next episode, should we tackle more of the side quests that we can do now by exploring the galaxy, or should we head to Pharos and continue the story in our search for Saren? Let me know in the comments below or in the live chat if you're watching the premiere. Thank you guys so much for watching, and remember, never give up, never surrender to the rogue VI. Bye, everyone.